Hello everyone and welcome to another part of the Galaga SDL tutorial videos. And in this video, we will continue working on the play screen sidebar. So we stopped in the last video where we created our uh, high score and the player score, and we had the player score blinking. Uh, and then we had a way to set the high score and the player score from the play screen. So this is where we are at our right now. In this video, we will be implementing the player lives. And for this, we will start off by creating a static constant int. So this is in our play sidebar .h. And we will do static constant int, and we'll call this one max underscore ship underscore textures. And this will be equal to five. This is because we have uh, if we have five lives, we want to show five ships on the sidebar. If we have less than that, we show less ships. But if we have, let's say, 10 lives, we only want to show five ships and then a number that says 10 uh, beside them. So now that we have this, we can create our game entity and call game entity pointer and call this one M ships. Then a texture pointer array which will be called m ship textures and this will be off size max underscore ship textures then after that we will need a scoreboard pointer um, but actually let's first implement the ship textures so we will have the five ship textures so we will need though an integer to keep track of how many total ships we have because we might have more than five. So m total ships. And then we will worry about the number uh, that we show beside the ships later on. So let's now go to our play sidebar.cpp and start implementing some of these things. So the first thing that we need to create is the ships game entity. So M ships is going to be equal to a new game entity. Its parent will be our sidebar. So M ships parent is uh, is this, and M ships position is going to be let's say a vector two of 0.0f. But we know that we are down to 192, so let's send it down uh, quite a bit more. So something like 300, for example. So that the lives are further down from where the player score is. Now that we created it, let's delete it. So delete M ships. M ships is going to be equal to null. We don't need to render anything for that, so we can leave that as it is. So next up are the ship textures. We need to uh, we need to create these ship textures, and we don't want to keep creating textures and destroying them if we have more lives than five or less lives than uh, five. So what we can do is create all five, place them in the constructor, so put them in the right positions, and only render the amount of ships that we have uh, or the amount of lives that we have. So if we have three, we only render the first three ships and so on. So we can do a four int i equals zero. i is less than our max ship textures, i plus plus. And then m ship textures at i is going to be equal to a new texture. And over here, I have the player's ship. So this player ship is called uh, player ship.png. We'll probably be using the same ship for the player entity as well. So if I go to edit and resize pixels, it's um, 60 wide and 67 high. So over here, I can say that the texture that I want is the player ship.png. Now for the parent, we will set the parent of these ships to be M ships. So M ship textures at I parent is M ships. Then uh, now to set up the position. So M ships or M ship textures at I position is going to be a vector two 
of let's say uh, we want to have it start from zero and then go horizontally three times and then once it's after three it would go down and start all over again so our x value since our ship is 60 wide we can add a two pixel buffer so we will be 62.0f multiplied by i modulus 3 and this will be our x value so at 0 i modulus 3 would be 0 so the x would be 0 if it's 1 it would be 1 times 62 would be 62 if it's 2 it would be 2 times so it would be 124 then when it's 3 it would be 0 again so it would start from uh, the beginning again so every 3 it would just repeat now for the y uh, for our y it will be so we know that our height is 67 vertically so for that we will have let's round it off to 70 let's say 0 0.0f multiplied by i divided by 3 and having it this way will be so for the first row it's less than 3 so it would stay at 0 and then for the second row it would be starting from 3 so 0 1 and 2 would be fine it would be at 0 and then um, 3 and 4 would be more than 3 so this would return 1 and then it would be at 70 so that's just to loop it around to make it uh, follow the grid And yeah, this should be it for the ship textures array. Now, we probably need a way to clear all this up and we will need to clear it up um, using a for loop in here. So for int i equals zero. So in the destructor, i is less than the max textures. i plus plus, delete m shift textures at i, and m shift textures at i equals null. So now that this is cleared, what we can do is to now render them. So for int i equals zero, i is less than max ship textures. But we also need to keep track of the total lives that we have. If we ha only have three lives, for example, we don't want to render the entire thing up to max ship textures. So we can tell it and i is also less than m total ships. So it will be, if, it's, if total ships is more than five, it will be less than five. If total ships is less than five, it would be total ships. So it's getting uh, pretty much the minimum of the two and then i plus plus now in here we can say that our m ship textures at i render and that should be it for this uh, the last thing that we need to do is to just so we we already initialized these two and clear them so we need to set our total ships so down here let's give it let's try it for an example and give it m total ships is equal to one and let's see what this looks like Okay, so now we have one ship here. Let's say it's two for total ships. We have two ships. And you'll notice already that this is a bit to the right. We need to move it back to the left a bit. So to do that in M ships, we can just move this one back. So let's say negative 30, for example. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, it's still a bit to the right. So let's say negative 40. Okay, so that looks fine. Let's increase the total ships now to five to see all our ships. There we go, that looks fine. Uh, but it's a bit too close, so we might want to lower it down a bit. So instead of 300, let's go bring it down to like 450 instead. There we go. And let's see. Okay, so this looks fine. Now the only thing that's left to do is to add the label if our lives is more than 5. Because let's say our lives are something like 15. 
it should only right now show the five ships and nothing more. So we only have the five ships. We need to now um, tell it to render the label if our lives is, are more than five. So back here now in the playsidebar.h, place right under the ship textures, we can create our scoreboard. So a scoreboard pointer m ships. Total ships label. So our total ships label will be equal to a new scoreboard. And then our m total ships labels parent is going to be equal to m ships. And our m total ships label position. Now for the position, we know that we have our ships uh, arranged in, uh, in a grid. So it starts off being 62. We want it in the grid point, which is three over and one down. So what we can do, for example, just to uh, have it a bit more visual, uh, let's first clear this up. So down here in the destructor, we can go down here and say M total ships label or delete M total ships label and M total ships label equals now and then we also want m total ships label render so now we're rendering it as well uh, we can run it and see what it looks like so the ships label right now is all the way up here because it's centered onto uh, the screen so what we can do is over here tell it that its position needs to be where this ship should have been. And this ship is at, this is at 0, 62, and then 124. So its x should be somewhere around 124. And this ship is at 70. So these are at 70. So it's somewhere at 70 on the x, uh, on the y, and 124 on the x. So let's try that first. So the m total ships label position is going to be equal to a vector 2 of 124. 0.0f on the x and 70.0f on the y. And let's see what that looks like. So this is right here and it seems like it's a way too high and it's a little bit to the left so we can just edit that manually uh, a bit by bit until we get the outcome that we want. So it's a bit too far on the left so we can increase the x a bit to let's say 40, so 140. And it's a, it was a bit too high, so let's increase it to 80 on the Y. Now if we try to run it, uh, that looks pretty good. Maybe lower it down a little bit more, or actually let's try something like, um, so the lives, let's try something around 88. And let us say that our M total ships label score is going to be equal to our total ships. Now if we try to run it, there we go. So this is saying 88. If our ships are, let's say, 6, now this is 6, which is fine. But if our ships are 1, we don't want this to be rendered. Right now it's being rendered even if it's less than 5. So we can go down to the render and say that if m total ships is more than the max ship textures, render our total ships label. Now if we go here and run it, one, there is nothing. If we change that to let's say five, it shouldn't appear still. And then as soon as it hits, let's say six, there we go. So it starts appearing again. So now that we have all this set up, we need a way to set the total ships from outside the play side bar. 
More specifically, we want to be able to set it from our play screen. For that, we will create a public function. So void set lives, and this will be end lives. Or to keep it consistent, set ships, and let's call this one ships. Now we need to implement that. We will go down to where it's underneath player score, so somewhere around here. Void play side bar set ships and ships. Total ships is going to be equal to ships. And you remember that the scoreboard, the problem with it is that every time the score is updated, it's refreshed. So it deletes all the old textures and makes new textures. So we don't need to do this if the ships are less than our max ships. So we can say that if the ships are more than the max ship textures, then our M total ships label score is going to be equal to the ships. So now if the player has like one life, it doesn't need to update this ship's label. If they have something like 70 on the other hand, it would need to update it. Okay, so now we can go back up to our constructor and remove this because we don't want to be setting this inside our constructor. So the total ships will equal equals six and setting the score should be removed. And we can go to our play screen and say that our M sidebar set ships to the player starts off with three. Now our set score being 50,000, we can probably remove that now because we want the player to start off being at, uh, at zero score. So we don't need to be setting this to 50,000 and set ships to three, which is fine. So now if we run it, there we go. So the player has three ships. If we set it to like 70, And now they have all five and 70 over here. Okay, so that seems to be working pretty well. Later on, we will have actual variables for these so that we don't uh, hard code these numbers, but we'll do that later once we actually start working on the play screen and the game mechanics. But for uh, the purposes of this video, this should be it. Now we have all our uh, player ships and we have the scores working for the sidebar. So. Uh, what we are going to do in the next video is to set the level flags. And once we have that working, this should be it for the sidebar and we can actually work on the game mechanics. But this will be it for this video. I really hope it helped. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.